Explore Tulsa is an opportunity to see behind the scenes of Tulsa's most unique places. To hear the stories of real people who are doing fantastic things and who love living here. We look at the people, places, and events that make Tulsa home. Welcome to a few minutes of Exploring Tulsa. Hi, I'm Austin Morton. We appreciate you being here as we explore Tulsa, and we're happy to share all the things that make this town a great place to live. And I'm Trish Whitmer. Thanks for joining us. Austin, one of the greatest things about Tulsa is the people who live here. People who give back to the community and spend their day building a better Tulsa for everyone. Our first story is of one man and his staff who are working hard to build dreams at a place called the Tulsa Dream Center. 20% of the population living in this community is living at or below poverty level. There's so many needs all over the world, but oftentimes we can forget the major needs that are happening right here in our own city. The Dream Center made a huge difference in my own personal life. I actually found out on Christmas Eve of 2017 where my mom started crying. And of course, I asked mom, what, why are you crying? And she said, I never told you, but when you were in elementary school, I stood in line at one of the toy Christmas giveaway services that the Dream Center does every Christmas. We didn't have anything, but the Dream Center loaded up my car and my trunk, so that way I'm able, that she was able to give us Christmas gifts. There's a quote that says, the future belongs to those who prepare today. So we wanna equip our boys and girls today to have a brighter future. Right now we have over 200 boys and girls, 207 boys and girls in our after school uh, program. We have a satellite program at William Penn Elementary and we also house 100 boys here at the Tulsa Dream Center from 2.30 to 6, Monday through Thursday. In our program, we feed them. Maslow's theory, you must first meet the basic need. And so for us, we feed all of our boys and girls every single day that they come to the Dream Center. We also have a Saturday program where we also will feed them breakfast and lunch. Because we believe that education is the key to breaking generational poverty. So that's why we focus on literacy and math because we know if you don't know how to read, you can't apply for a job. If you don't know how to read, you can't drive a car. For our adults in this community at the Dream Center, we have a medical program that's open two and a half days a week. We've got a great partnership with Good Samaritan and St. John Health System, where we really focus on diabetes prevention program. Uh, last year, we were able to help distribute over $750,000 for diabetic prevention medication, but also the education that goes along with that. Three times a week, we give away groceries. We focus on fresh produce and meats, but we're able to help stretch if they're on a fixed income, many seniors in this community, we're able to stretch their social security check or families living at or below that poverty level. They're able to sustain throughout a time until they can make ends meet. We give away coats and gloves, but also your day-to-day -day needs for babies and diapers. We do so much from zero all the way through seniors. We run on a very lean, small staff, as you can imagine, in a nonprofit. So our volunteers mean everything to us, from sorting in the clothing room, to helping in our medical clinic, to helping tutor boys and girls. Many even of our Tulsa police officers will come out and they tutor and mentor our boys and girls helping to clean the building, helping to paint the parking lot, helping to sort groceries. That means everything. And so for those that are out there that may say, man, I, I wanna be a part. I can't help every day, or I may not even be able to help every week, but I can donate a day a month, or one day a week, or a few hours a week. That is a tremendous blessing and a tremendous honor because we, we have tremendous need. First annual Night of Dreams Gala. Our goal from the gala is $100,000 to be raised, and we're over halfway there. 
And so we want to further advance what we're calling, what we're passionate about, and that takes resources. It's an honor to serve so many boys and girls. Uh, and my two-year-old daughter, she knows, Daddy, are we going to the Dream Center? She knows we come to serve. And that's the greatest gift of all is having the ability to serve so many people and really helping to inspire so many boys and girls, but also families that, that are in need here in, in North Tulsa. Wow, what a great story. If you go to TulsaDreamCenter.org, you'll see all the details about their first annual fundraiser, Night of Dreams. Now what I like is it's not just about one person or even a small group. AJ will be the first to point to all the volunteers and great staff it takes to make that place work. We'll just take a moment and say thank you to everyone involved. We're coming back in just a bit with one of the most prestigious institutions in Tulsa and how you can spend the day with them for free. When Explore Tulsa returns in a moment. Take charge of your health. We are what we put into our bodies. We approach medicine from a unique standpoint. Rather than treating only the symptoms of an illness, we work to find the root cause and promote wellness of the entire body. Our clinic offers complete assessment and treatment programs, including hormone replacement therapy, osteopathic manipulative therapy, and genetic DNA testing. It all starts with a medical evaluation. Contact us today to begin your path to wellness. Hi, Dr. Robert Zellner here. For over 20 years, I've offered affordable, convenient eye care in Tulsa. Right now, you can get one pair of glasses or contact lenses starting at just $99 or my two-pair deal for $129. Hey, and as always, the eye exam's included. Walk-ins are always welcome. Glasses are ready in about an hour. Plus, we have over 2,000 frames to choose from. We're open seven days a week. Come see why we're voted Tulsa Best. And our drive through at 69th and Memorial makes pickup simple and easy. For the best eye care value in Tulsa, Dr. Robert Zellner & Associates. Hello, and welcome back to Explore Tulsa. Trish, one signature of a great city is its museums and public spaces. And Tulsa is no different. We're going to take a look at one of the finest museums in the country. And a way you can go spend a fun day Sunday as we visit with Allison and Sarah at Gilcrease Museum. I've established programs for youth up to 99 and plus years old. We really believe that lifelong learning is part of our commitment here. So we really try and have enough programs and variety of programs for anybody and everybody. Well, I have a background of teaching. I was teaching in a private school and a public school. I've been an educator, uh, an art educator for almost 20 years. And I've worked um, in both academic settings in K through 12 environments as well as college teaching. And I uh, have also worked in, in three different museums before coming here. This museum position that came open was just perfect. It combined art, education, and new technologies. So it was the place for me. I knew this is the place where I wanted to work because I think there are incredible stories that this museum tells about the American experience and there are many, many opportunities to be able to share those with the public both in Tulsa and uh, the wider public as well. Funday Sunday. It is a wonderful program we offer it once a month on the third Sunday of every month and it is a free day for the museum and it is open for everyone to come and enjoy. We offer activities for all age groups so usually the the programs are from 12 to 4 in the afternoon but the museum is open from 10 to 5 so uh, it's a free day for everybody to come enjoy and see new exhibitions that come up and experience all the programming that we do. Funday Sundays we really like to feature our exhibitions and our collection and what the museum has to offer. In the past we've had a Frida Kahlo show of photography and we had a, a Frida Kahlo look-alike contest and artwork and um, art projects to do so that was fun to bring people in to do that. For this coming one we are featuring um, our new exhibition Norman Rockwell. We will also be doing a lot of hands-on projects that connect to the Norman Rockwell exhibition specifically Norman Rockwell civil rights images. And also this is Black History Month so we are combining um, and doing some enriching programs 
sort of focusing on the uh, civil rights era and that time frame. So, and it really coordinates really well with some of the pieces that are in the Norman Rockwell exhibition that's coming up. I think a lot of people aren't aware of what a strong advocate for civil rights Norman Rockwell was. And when we see these images that he created in the late 60s, it's really revelatory of his commitment to that kind of journalistic, um, I think, honesty that those images produce. So to be able to engage the public in those, to be able to find portals for people to learn about American history in a way that's accessible and interesting is uh, something that I think we're, we're going to be able to do through hands-on projects and activities this upcoming Fun Day Sunday. I'm really excited about this moment um, in history for the Gilchrist Museum. We've got a lot of fun program ahead and we're very excited because the museum is going to be expanding so our future looks bright and big so we've got a lot of education programming for all ages in our new spaces and um, it's going to be very exciting. We are at a really exciting juncture where I think a lot of our staff is on the same page. Uh, we realize that there are incredible stories to tell here. We have two curators and uh, hopefully hiring more soon that are committed to telling stories that are stories that haven't been told about the United States, about the Americas. Um, broader stories examining some things that are um, stereotypes that really are untrue. So I think we have an opportunity to tell a broader, more honest, more equitable story about the United States and the Americas in general. So um, I'm excited about being able to work with community partners that we can engage with to be able to help tell, us those, tell those stories with us because we can tell those stories, but I think when we can work with communities that have been part of those stories, that's when we're doing our job. Not only does Gilcrease house one of the finest collections of art, but if you've never visited the grounds, you are in for a treat. Over 20 acres of the grounds are maintained as themed gardens and are open to the public to enjoy. Not to mention a great restaurant right there next to the museum. Hey, I think that's another segment down the road sometime. Ooh, that could be awesome. Let's make that happen. To learn about all the amenities, go to gilcrease.org and plan to enjoy soon. Stay tuned. Explore Tulsa's coming right back after this. Our most beautiful 4K HDR TV. Easily manage your cables for even a clean rear look. It hangs flat on the wall, just like a piece of art. Yet its slimness creates astounding images. Experience new discoveries with Android TV by getting instant access to everything you need. Introducing the latest Sony 4K HDR TV. Thanks for coming back. Trish, since 1976, February has been recognized as Black History Month. And there's a historic home near the Greenwood Culture Center that we found very interesting, and I think you will too. Michelle Brown gives us a tour of this little known Tulsa landmark. Sam and Lucy Mackey were the actual homeowners. Mabel B. Little uh, purchased the home later, and she was one of the North Tulsa pioneers who fought um, to save the home as an example of how some African Americans were able to live during the early 1920s. Their original home was destroyed during the Tulsa Race Riot and they were one of the uh, African American families that decided that they wanted to remain on Greenwood and rebuild their home. Mr. Mackey didn't want to just build a home, he wanted his wife uh, Lucy to have a home as nice as the home that she worked in um, for rich white Tulsans. And so he hired an architect who won um, $1,000 for the design of the home. It was considered very modern at the time because it was one of the uh, first homes where you could stand at the bottom of the stairs and cut the lights on upstairs and that was a really big deal. And there were separate walk-in closets, huge bedrooms uh, upstairs, um, a bathroom downstairs and upstairs. And there are several pieces um, that are in the home now that belong to 
uh, the family pieces that date back to the 1800s. For example, the French courting chair, which was designed so that when a young lady had a male suitor, um, she would sit in the chair, her male suitor would sit in the chair, and then a parent or chaperone would sit in the third chair. Um, there's also the high back uh, chair and the organ, which were original pieces that belonged to the family. We're led to believe was that most African Americans during this time were poor, um, that they all lived in a one bedroom shack, but that just simply wasn't the case for, for many families in um, Tulsa, many black families in Tulsa. So we're proud of the pieces that are here that um, were original pieces that belonged to, to the family. And it gives you um, a great view of how some African Americans were able to live. When urban renewal came through, um, the community fought to save the San Malusi Mackey House. Um, it was located three blocks north of here on Greenwood, and they moved it section by section and put it back together. The uh, Mabel B. Little Heritage House was actually built before the Greenwood Cultural Center, and at one point, the Greenwood Cultural Center, the Oklahoma Jazz Hall of Fame, and the North Tulsa Heritage Foundation all worked out of the Mabel B. Little Heritage House. So when the home was uh, relocated and dedicated, uh, they named it the Mabel B. Little Heritage House. Many people still talk about coming to visit Mabel B. Little. I believe at one time she was a hairstylist. At one time uh, there were rooms that were available uh, for rent, but she's well known as being a uh, North Tulsa pioneer and one of the many people that um, was really committed and dedicated to remembering the history of Black Wall Street um, and recognizing the pioneers that um, led to the development of Black Wall Street. Well, the Greenwood Cultural Center, um, which now includes the Mabel B. Little Heritage House, has always been a focal point for our community. And we have uh, been honored with the responsibility of um, continuing to educate people about the rich history of African Americans in Tulsa, which includes the 1921 Tulsa Race Riot and Black Wall Street. And there are very few places where you can go to learn about that part of our history. We still encounter people all the time that come to Tulsa specifically to visit the Greenwood Cultural Center and to view the exhibits and to learn more about this part of our history. There are still people that have never heard about it um, or that know very little about it. Um, so that's still a very vital, important role that we play um, in our community and for uh, Tulsa as a whole. Tulsa has a rich, unique, and diverse heritage. Preserving that heritage, both good and bad, only helps Tulsa grow stronger. All I heard was French courting chair. <laughs> Whoever came up with that idea was not sitting in the courtship seat of that chair. I promise you that. I'm going to wrap my mind around that a little while while we take a break and come right back with more Explore Tulsa. 600 million people from over 238,000 miles away watched what no other person had ever done before. Neil Armstrong became the first man to step on the surface of the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Television brings us more than just entertainment. It brings us history. History that changes our lives. Sony and Video Revolution take you there. From space travel to world championships. Tomorrow's technology today. 4K smart TVs and the largest flat screens available. Now more than ever, you have the best seat in the world when history is made. Video Revolution. On the northwest corner, 71st and Lewis. Welcome back to another story on Explore Tulsa. Trish, aside from me, I think we found the coolest guy in Tulsa for this next segment. I couldn't agree more. Setting you aside, Austin, Chris Wallard is one interesting dude, and his work is fascinating too. Yeah, there's another, there's a, a bass player, a ship of thieves. I don't know. 
So I always get confused with that guy. Like sometimes I get like on Instagram, they're like, hey, you should look at this, you know, like here's what's new in your feed. I'm like, well, that's not me. Like I'm not a bass player in Florida. I've built bikes before and, and cars and stuff. And I just, I get tired of all the, the kind of macho BS. So when I have more fun with it, I started doing the, the art cars and decided to build this guy, something small I could take to parades and, and have fun with. Actually, the, the real story is, I was trying to buy a small toy, like a small version of this. There was an old toy from the 50s, and it was a little tin toy, pretty cool. So I got online and I found one. I was like, that's pretty neat, I'll bid on it. So I bid up to like a couple hundred bucks, thinking like, man, that's, that's a lot of money for a toy. And I sat and I watched the auction, and like it went up to like $5,000. I just couldn't believe that somebody would spend that for a toy, so then I thought, Man, wait, like 5,000 bucks, like I could build a real one for that and drive it around. So I'm like, yeah, I think I will. So I started building this. Yeah, I, uh, the first, I, I guess the, the bigger piece, which wasn't really a public installation, but it was through a, a, a corporation, the uh, uh, Hogan. It was a brand new building. It was really cool. It was, it's an amazing build. And they had um, this kind of atrium area that was just glass and they wanted to do some artwork in there and they wanted it to have a daytime presence and a nighttime presence and at the time I was uh, just getting into LEDs. So they actually contacted me and another artist, R.C. Morrison, and we came together on the project and built uh, the large, uh, basically it looks kind of like a jellyfish or you know an iceberg is kind of what it is, but it has LEDs in it that light up and, uh, at nighttime. The Brady Owners Association and they actually decided they wanted some artwork. So they contacted the TDA, Postal Development Authority, and they put out a call to art. Uh, they wanted to kind of revitalize like this park that no one really knew about. So, so I applied for that and I got that. I won that commission and that was just installed um, October 2017. So it's got interactive LED elements too. So it's got the daytime and the nighttime presence too. I sort of took that idea. I really, I really kind of dug that idea that you, you can build a structure and you know, it'll have a presence in the daytime, but then at nighttime for people who are down there, it also has, like it comes alive and interacts with you. And you know, as you approach it, like it senses your movements and, and kind of changes and, and interacts with you. So it's kind of exciting. It was kind of fun to, to have that opportunity. Well, the goal is I want to build public art. Like I enjoy doing public art, but I want to be able to manipulate like really thick plate metal. You can't really, do public art with material that's this thin like you just you have to make it people proof but at the same time like I want to be able to do the same kind of curves and the same sort of shapes so I've got to figure out a way to basically take all of this tooling and supersize it to be able to do what I want to do for public art so that was the motivation behind creating the mega press I went to Burning Man last year and was completely blown away at the scale and the magnitude of the art that's out there. I mean, it's amazing. And I think I kind of, like I've done some festivals, uh, like locally, I've done some music festivals, uh, Easter Island Festival, which is what this piece went out to. And uh, I just was really inspired. It was so much fun, like it was amazing. Like public art, but you don't have to follow all the rules. Like you can do whatever you want. I mean, these things shoot fire, they've got crazy lights, there's like dance parties that go on all night long, and it's just, it's a, quite an environment. And it's a different, like, I don't, I don't know, like for an artist, like it's a different venue. Like there are, there's actually support for the arts. Like it seems like there's a little bit of shift, like as far as like artists being able to, to make money now. I mean, the public art, I like doing that. It, it's, you know, it's, very structured though. Like you have to make sure everything is safe for the public. It's got to be, you know, bulletproof. It's got to be, you know, you got to follow these rules. You know, you've got the playground rules. You don't want people to get hurt on your stuff. You know, then you've got Burning Man, which is, you want it to be safe, but at the same time, you can do a lot more. You can, you can get pretty crazy if you want to. I don't know, there's a lot of interesting changes, I think, for artists now. There's lots of different ways to, to make a living as an artist. And I'm gonna, I'm just trying to pursue like all those different avenues and see what works out. Okay, so if I made a Harley Yama with my bare hands and drove a van with a rocket on top, 
I think I could be as cool as Chris. Wait, a Harley Yama? Sure, a Harley Davidson and a Yamaha welded together with some sci-fi fins thrown in just because. Okay, I think you stick with your electronics, my friend, and we'll still call you the cool kid. We're taking a break, but we'll be right back to wrap up Explore Tulsa in just a minute. Have you outgrown your home entertainment system? Then it's time to step up with Video Revolution and Sony for the ultimate 4K home theater experience. Size does matter when it comes to the quality and enjoyment that you get from a home entertainment system. Engineered by the experts at Video Revolution on the northwest corner of 71st and Lewis. Let's take a moment to talk about one of the core four supplements, omega-3 fatty acids. Symptoms of omega-3 fatty acid deficiency include fatigue, poor memory, heart problems, mood swings or depression, and poor circulation. Omega-3 fatty acids are essential for human health, yet the body can't make some of them. You have to get them through the food that you eat. So there are some great omega-3 sources, which include salmon, tuna, and halibut, or you can use a healthy supplement. When you are looking for an omega-3 supplement, make sure that it contains EPA and DHA, that those two things make up the majority of the supplement you are buying. To get the exact omega-3 supplement that we take, along with a 15% off coupon, visit SherwoodWellness.tv slash core4. At Video Revolution, the future is now. Behold the beauty of the new Sony 4K High Dynamic Range TV. A true view display producing real-world clarity and brilliant colors with triluminous X1 technology. Step into the future for yourself at Video Revolution on the northwest corner of 71st and Lewis. That's our show for this time. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you supporting what we do each week. Special thanks to Aaron Johnson and all the staff and volunteers at the Tulsa Dream Center for hosting the Night of Dreams Gala. Thanks too to Allison Rossi and Sarah Wright at Gilcrease for the wonderful tour. Plus our thanks to Michelle Brown and the Mabel B. Little Heritage House and the Greenwood Cultural Center. Remember, if you missed any of the show, you can always find us at ExploreTulsa.com and on YouTube, the Explore Tulsa channel. As always, each week we feature the people, places, and attractions that make us proud to call Tulsa our home. Hey, don't forget to like us on Facebook and share with us someone you think Tulsa should know more about. Explore Tulsa is brought to you by Video Revolution, located on the northwest corner of 71st Lewis. Stop in and say hi to Ron, me, and all the guys for any of your home entertainment needs. And Explore Tulsa is also proudly brought to you by Dr. Robert Zollner and Associates. Home of Tulsa's best eye care value with two locations, 3016 South Harvard and 69th Memorial. Stop by our newest sponsors, Drs. Michelle and Mark Sherwood from Functional Medical Institute, located on the northwest corner of 61st and Sheridan. Your journey to whole body healing and wellness begins with Functional Medical Institute. Well, that's all the time we have for you on this week's show, but we'll see you next week right here on Explore Tulsa.